Thank you, Lisa. Welcome this first Sunday of Pride Month. We're so glad you're here with us today. Um, many of our worshipers are at Los Ranchos Pride today, but we're sure glad you're here with us today. So if you rise as you're able, we're going to start with We Are Marching. And that's a typo. Anybody plan to go to Los Ranchos Pride today? Awesome. <laughs> That's the reason you're all here, right? <laughs> We know this one anyway, though, don't we? Yeah, let's do it. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Sing that four times. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, we are marching, whoa, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, we are marching, whoa, we are marching in the light of God. We are living, we are living in the love of God. 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 We are living, we are living, we are living. Oh, we are living in the love of God. We are living, we are living, we are living. Oh, we are living in the love of God. We are moving in the power 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 of God. We are moving, we are moving, we are moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. We are moving, we are moving, we are moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. And we are marching, mar marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. Let's pray. Loving God, we have gathered here today filled with joy and love and excitement as we come together to worship and praise your holy name. As we begin the month of pride celebration, God, strengthen our people and may we be a light of Christ to those who are searching and seeking. Help us, God, to be gentle with ourselves and gentle with those around us as we continue on this journey that you've called us to be on. And we say all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Oh, what a joy it is to have everybody here today. Um, many of our people are in Los Ranchos. Somebody, uh, we're selling like sodas and water, and then somebody donated like 80 boxes of Twinkies. So <laughs> we're going to be selling Twinkie. But, so um, hopefully we sell all the Twinkies and we don't bring them back here. If not, we'll have them for refreshments following worship. And uh, let's see, so everyone sign in on the attendance registers located in the seat pockets in front of you. Uh, if you're going to help set up for Albuquerque Pride at the Balloon Fiesta Park, please let me know as you leave today or call me and ask me what time we're going to be going there to set up. Um, it wasn't on their website, so I've got to try to find that information. I'm sorry I didn't get it done, but we were kind of we're kind of short staffed today, so that's okay. Take, you know, just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to put on a worship service. Okay, if this is your first time with us, welcome, and please complete a welcome card, and we will have a gift for you following worship. 
just to thank you for being here. Okay, let's go into our threshold moment. For centuries, religious and political power holders have taken select passages from the Jewish and Christian scriptures and used them to deny, great, oppress, and harm those with non-traditional sexual orientations and gender identities. As a result, many per people have been turned away from these sacred texts as a means of inspiration and hope for their lives. There are many passages in the Bible that present very positive images of people who do not fit the traditional societal molds. So today we begin our series, Coming Out from the Bible, where we will take a look at five different stories through our queer eyes. By that we mean eyes that see things differently. First is the story of two women, Naomi, who's a widow, and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, who is also a widow. And Ruth makes a vow to Naomi to never leave her. And Naomi, Naomi takes Ruth under her wing and helps her find a way to thrive in a culture and land that is not her own. In the end, the community recognizes their love and commitment. third chapter, verses 15 through 18. Boaz said to Ruth, bring the shawl you're wearing and spread it out. She spread it out and he poured it full of barley, six measures, and put it on her shoulders. Then she went back to town. When she came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, and how did things go, my dear daughter? Ruth told her everything that the man had done for her, adding, and he gave me all this barley besides six quarts. He told me, you can't go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. Naomi said, sit back and relax, my dear daughter, until we find out how things turn out. This man isn't going to waste any time. Mark my words, he's going to get everything wrapped up today. This is the time when we come together as a community of faith to pray. Um, where two or three are gathered together in God's name, God is there with us also. So let's take a moment and just center ourselves. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and just breathe in the presence of the Spirit that is with us today. And let go of any burdens or challenges, worries, distractions you have. Today, O oh God, we release those things over which we have no control of. Help us, God, to let go of people or situations that continually hold us back in life. People that perhaps need our help the most but are unwilling to receive it. Help us to set limits, God. For those of us that are facing uncertainty financially, we ask that we can trust in you, O oh God, that you will open up other ways to, to give us relief. As we celebrate pride this month, I pray that you will keep all of us safe and happy and filled with joy. And may we just reach out to many of your people who have never experienced your love, your grace, your compassion. Help us as a church to stay strong and firm in what we believe and how we welcome one another each and every Sunday. We thank you, God, for this, and we just take a moment to lift up quietly to you our prayer. And whatever has been shared, O oh God, may you hold it gently in your hands and provide the healing that is needed. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. feel like a rabbit jumping all over the place this morning. Okay, Ruth and Naomi. Anybody grow up and go to Bible school or Sunday school or vacation Bible school and hear the story of Ruth and Naomi? Or many of us have, it's a, it's a beautiful story. So I'm going to give you a quick Reader's Digest condensed verse about, um, version I mean, do they still put Reader's Digest out? Anybody still get that? Or Y'all know what it is? It, <laughs> okay. So Naomi was an Israelite widow, and she was living in a while for a while in Moab. And so she married her two sons to Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. The sons later died, leaving Naomi all alone without husband or sons. And women were very dependent on men back in those days uh, for their income, for their livelihood, for their food, for their place to live. When Naomi heard about conditions had improved in Israel, her homeland, she decided to return, and she was going to take her two daughters-in-law with her. But she then had a change of heart and encourages the two women to return to their own homes in Moab. Now, after some persuasion, Orpah did so, but Ruth refused. Referring to the relationship to, between Ruth and Naomi, Ruth says that she wants to clave or cleave unto a Naomi. This book was probably included in the Hebrew scriptures because King David was one of the descendants of Ruth. And I actually got this information from a Jewish text. So. And although the same-sex friendship appears to have been very close, there is no proof that it was a sexually active relationship. And I agree with that. I, just, I have a hard time thinking they entered into that. But Ruth says it so romantically in some ways, but also with such loyalty to Naomi. Do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. And may God do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. That's a great wedding text, a text to put in a wedding, especially for two lesbians. So uh, it's really very moving. Um, when my mother uh, got married, right before she died, actually, I uh, said this text to her during their reception. They had asked me to say something. And, and so I said, today, you know, you're leaving one area and going to a new area, to a new husband. 
So Ruth was one of those people that was the very act, the opposite of selfishness. Individual, individualistic behavior entails looking out only for oneself, regarding only one's interest as paramount, even when it undermines the needs of another person. Now this attitude was pretty common during the time of Ruth. But Ruth's unprecedented act of attaching herself to another is an important step in beginning the renovation of society so sorely needed. Why doesn't that make sense? Ruth doing an act of love to stay with Naomi. And Ruth is going to be in a strange country back in Israel, and she would have to learn their customs. Ruth had a, definitely had an unusual relationship with Naomi, in which her decision to remain with her mon, un, un, law kind of goes against the society of norm. Now, John Boswell, a theologian, wrote this. He said, there is, a little, there is little in the book of Ruth to suggest that anything other than royalty bound Ruth to Naomi. He also points out that the obvious devotion of Ruth to Naomi is instrumental in securing the attention of Boaz. So when they arrived in Moab, um, Naomi schemed up that Ruth was going to marry Boaz, who was a man that was very wealthy. I think he was a distant relative of Naomi, possibly. So that was what um, Rachel read to us. So, so I guess Ruth was out there trying to get Moab's attention so she could get fed. Women used to have to do that, you know. We had to do something because we were dependent upon men back then. There's another theologian that asked but does not answer the question, was it a lesbian relationship? He said, is this a story about being lesbians which was not forbidden at all in the law? Whatever the answer, it is a story of love and loyalty between two women. And however, he does point out another aspect of the story, which is less commonly remarked on. And that is a story of the outsider. Ruth was certainly an outsider. And how outsiders can become insiders. As a Moabite woman, Ruth is very much an outsider in Israel society. Yet she accepts this in her loyalty to, her, to Naomi. And is ultimately rewarded by marrying Boaz and becoming the mother of Obed. So really, the book of Ruth is a book of inclusivity of God's call and another biblical illustration of the limits of the law. All of us who grow to accept and affirm our sexuality have in some sense heard the call to come out at some point. In grief and regret, many of us have felt forced to leave our own families or to leave a church or a community, much as Ruth did, to keep to our commitments. Following Ruth and Naomi's strategy, we may use whatever is available to us in the church and society to survive. Yet alongside Ruth and Naomi, we use our commitment to lovers, our fresh understandings of God and our new communities of faith, maybe through a support group, a network, a new congregation, so that we can not only survive, but thrive in a healthy environment. Mona West, who is a pastor in MCC churches, she wrote in the Queer Bible Commentary that Ruth is one of our queer ancestors. For Mona, Ruth is not specifically a lesbian, but a person who resists heterosexist patriarchal family structures and redefines her relationships according to what would be most effective for her and for Naomi. So when Boaz, Naomi's kinsman, and Ruth's eventual husband, enters the picture, Wes sees the relationship as a queer triangle. Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz provide our community with an ancient example of the ways in which we've been creating our fam families. Have many of you heard the family of choice that we make a, we have our family by blood? And I don't see that so much now, and I didn't see it so much moving from east to west. Uh, but many of us had to leave our families, and we would make our families of choice, our partner, um, other, you know, other couples or friends in the church or friends that we have, um, other parents that are open and accepting to people that have alternate lifestyles. So um, I think that's a good lesson for all of us. We have our family of choice and our family of blood. So. Um, hopefully most of you still have your family of choice. So. I, I think in New Mexico I've noticed there's a tightness around the family. So I hope you'll stay with us for the next couple of weeks. We're going to be looking at 
different stories. I think next week we're going to be doing the story of Jonathan and David, which is truly a love story um, and very moving, and Paul will be presenting that. But I think it's going to be lots of fun. And if you have any questions, please call and ask. Don't be afraid to, to ask or write it down. Okay, so I personally don't believe that Ruth or Naomi entered into a sexual relationship, but I think that they were two women who dearly loved each other. And hopefully Boaz let Naomi live with him and Ruth once they got married. I'm sure that he did. But let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for looking at the Bible with new eyes and fresh eyes and finding out that, yes, it can still speak to us today in our 21st century lives. Bless us, God, as we become firm in our beliefs and strong in our faith. And may we just do so in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.
here at the right time, the right place. <clears throat> so the offering, we usually talk about money. That's the practical reality. The lights are on, the music's on, it takes money. Um, and for a lot of us, that's really automatic, okay? I, I write my check pretty automatically. I often forget to put an offering plate, but that's another problem, <laughs> okay? Um, but for some of us, it's not automatic at all. It's like, oh my goodness, do I have enough? And all the feelings and fears that can go with that, okay? Um, some of us, this may be our challenge just to give more, to take seriously that we need, you know, sort of like democracy. It's not passive. It's a participation activity, <laughs> and we, we will all do better as we participate more. Uh, this church talks a lot about being on a spiritual journey, which I love that. And um, I love that because it says this is not automatic pilot. It's Sunday. I'm here. Therefore, I'm here and nothing really matters. Not being on automatic pilot means there's something here for me and I hope also for each of us to further us on our spiritual journey. Now, that may be about money. I don't know. Um, but offering means giving, and maybe it means a check. But maybe it means something else. Maybe it means giving a little bit of your time to another human being. Maybe another human being in this church who you've never even said hello to. There's a challenge, OK? It may mean calling the pastor and say, hey, I have Tuesday afternoons off. Is there anything I could do if I came by the church for a couple hours that could be of help? Instead of what many of us do is come here on Tuesday afternoons and then talk her leg off and nothing gets done because we're so busy, yak, 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 okay? I know I'm guilty of that. So. Uh, the needs of this church are actually great. Money is the practical need. But building, maintaining, and building a community, especially since COVID, I think requires us all to think more and act more along that journey, along that path, to be of more help to build what we do have here. What we have here is good, but it's not enough because there are people here, there are people who are not here and it's not because they're at Rio Rancho, because they feel slighted, they feel ignored, they felt invisible. Maybe they got their feelers hurt. I don't know about that. So we all have that opportunity to just be, connect, say, do something a little more to bring the family into um, more of an alignment and into this way that we can grow. Um, we're kind of stuck right now. We've been stuck since COVID, but we don't have to be. Um, but it isn't going to happen up here. <laughs> the changes aren't going to happen up here. They're going to happen as each one of us allows ourselves to be challenged to do whatever that little bit more is. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I feel burdened every time I leave here. It's like, oh, I, should I do this? Should I do that? Okay. But if we allow ourselves to think and feel those things and then act on those things, at least one of those things, um, we all benefit. And the offering is one way to do that. Now, this is going to be kind of funny because George is in the, what you call it? Oh, Pete's going to help. I was going to say, because I'm also doing the offering. So I'm going to now go collect the offering. <laughs> Sweet break. 
this bread as we drink this cup. Lord, we remember how you gave your life on a brutal cross. Lord, we remember this is the way you've chosen to save. This is the way you make all things new. This is the way you've chosen to save. This is the way you make all things new. Broken and beautiful. Extravagant love, prodigal grace, broken and beautiful. God's perfect justice, mercy's embrace. As we break this bread, as we drink this cup, Lord, we remember. It was for my sin that this bread was torn. Lord, we remember this is the way you've chosen to save. This is the way you make all things new. This is the way you've chosen to save. This is the way you make all things new, broken and beautiful. Extravagant love, prodigal grace, broken and beautiful. God's perfect justice, mercy's embrace. As we break this bread, as we drink this cup, Lord, we remember. As Jesus got closer to his death, he drew closer to his disciples, wanting to share with them important messages and acts and so they were in Jerusalem for the holy days and they shared a meal together some believe it was a Passover meal but after that meal Jesus took a piece of bread and lifting it towards heaven he broke it he said take and eat this all of you this is my life which I've given for you likewise after he had given everybody the bread he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine he said drink from this cup all of you this shows my love, which I share with you so freely. Do this in remembrance of me. So this tradition of Holy Communion was started, and it continues so that we as followers of Jesus can be strengthened and renewed. And I believe that there was, this, there was a place for us at this table when we were first born. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, we ask that you bless these elements, and may they be for us what we understand them to be. For many of us, they are the body and the blood of the risen Christ. And for all of us, may they be a reminder of his life and it's his love, which he gave so freely. Bless these elements, O oh God. Amen. This is an open communion table. You need not be a member of this church or any church to come forward today. Uh, if you would rather take communion in your seat, you can let me, Nikki know and she can give you a little disposable one. So who's, are you holding Pete? You got it. Okay.
pray with me, please? Loving God, we come to you today thanking you for this meal and all that it offers us. Bless our time together today. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We hope you received a blessing. Now, if you're right as you're able, we're going to sing, My Life is in You. is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you i will praise you with all of praise you with all of my strength with all of my life with all of my strength all of my hope is in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life. With all of my strength. All of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you. Thank you all so much for being with us today. We're not doing refreshments today because of Los Ranchos Pride. Um, I hope to see you there or at Albuquerque Pride. It's free uh, entrance on Saturday, I mean on Friday, and buy your ticket if you're going to go on Saturday, buy your ticket online before you go. If not, there's a long line, so. But Los Ranchos. It's park, big park. We can look it. We can look it up for you. And look in Facebook events. Okay, those watching on online streaming, God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. If you're on Facebook, go to Facebook events.